This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. We're in um, the question Paladin. It's from December. Can't read it right. December. December 2011. It's question one from the F7 exam. It's not yet, so far as I'm aware, in any revision kit, neither Kaplan nor BPP, because we're only in March 2012 now, so it's only, what, three months since this question was actually set as an exam question. Um, it's uh, 14... I'll put 14.05... Um, what sort of question is it? I'm looking then at the requirement to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for Paladin as at 30th September. I can see from the columns of figures that I've got a subsidiary and an associate, uh, and there's no part B, there's no chat involved. So working one, Paladin, the subsidiary, the associate, and I'm told that we secured a majority shareholding and immediate payment uh, and a further payment. The immediate payment is recorded $4 a share. We also acquire 25% of that. But I don't know how many shares I got. Equity shares, 8 million shares. It says me in the uh, column of figures there, it's the Saracen, 8 million shares at $4 each. And 10 million shares altogether, so that's 80% and 20%. The only other thing I need to be aware of is the date on the 1st of October, and we're working through to September 30th, so it's a full year for the acquisition of the subsidiary and on the 1st of February we acquired 25% of the associates so February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September is 8 months that's 4 months pre and 8 months post for the acquisition of the associate Working 2 is the goodwill calculation the cost of the investment the cost of the investment we're told is four million a share and the immediate payment has been recorded the investment therefore eight million shares at four that's 32 million uh, but we've also got a deferred payment he does this now quite frequently does steve scott either deferred or a contingent payment if it's not a share for share exchange it's not simply going to be we bought 80 percent of a subsidiary and it cost us 20 million cash um, there will be some complication now within working to within the uh, the goodwill computation so we've got a deferred payment of 5.4 million uh, it's deferred for one year and the cost of capital next paragraph down so it's times 1.08 and times 1 divided by 1.08 uh, what else have we got to do that has not been recorded so 1 point that times that is 5 is it I think it's just 5 isn't it 5 million just let me check it and put it in my calculator 5 divided by 1.08 is Oh, 5.4, 5.4 divided by 1.08 equals is 5 million. The only other thing we've got to think about is the NCI. So I'm going to look at the end of the question. Note 5, profits and losses accrue evenly, so there's nothing to do with that other than bear in mind time time allocation. Impairment tests carried out concluded consolidated goodwill is not impaired, but disappointing as the value of the investment is impaired by 2.5, so I still don't know the value of the NCI. Point number 3, Saracen's inventory includes PUPs. Point number 2, at the date of acquisition of fair value, so there's a fair value adjustment to come. There's still no indication of the NCI. There it is. It's in uh, paragraph one. NCI is um, that's unusual. That is most unusual for uh, Steve Scott to put the NCI valuation basis or information within paragraph one of the um, the notes to the question. Most unusual. However, there's no reason why he shouldn't. The non-controlling interest on two million shares. And the share value, it says, is $3.50. 
so that gives me 7 million value of the NCI which is 44 million that I'm going to value the company at and now I'm going to look at fair value of the net assets at date of acquisition made up of shares I know the shares are 10 million retained earnings as at date of acquisition date of acquisition was 1st October retained earnings I'm told were 12 there's no share premiums, no revaluation. That looks like it. That's the book value of the uh, net assets. Paragraph 1 we've just dealt with. That's the NCI valuation. Paragraph 2, there will be. Um, there has been in every exam question, I think, uh, since I was a, a young boy, every exam question has got this. Um, the value of the net assets at date of acquisition was approximately equal to the, the book values, with the exception of. So beware of the fair value adjustment. This time it's the fair value, the with the exception of Sarah's plant. So the plant has got a fair value adjustment, four million above its carrying value. And that date, the plant will remain alive for four years. So I need to remember, I'm only going to write this down for you, NB plus one depreciation. Uh, as a fair value adjustment when I'm looking at the consolidated retained earnings at balance sheet date. Also at date uh, of acquisition, Paladin valued Saracen's customer relations. We've got a customer base and valued them at an intangible asset of three. We've not accounted for this trade relationships uh, uh, are expected to last for five years so divide by six that gives me plus five amortization I'm just going to go back at the start of this paragraph two the date of acquisition fair values were equal to carrying amount with the exception of plant which had a fair value of four above its carrying value at the date the plant had a remaining life of four years Saracen uses straight line depreciation so this adjustment has not been um, reflected within Saracen's figures and nor has the customer base been reflected in Saracen's figures so the Saracen balance sheet today does not reflect either of these two fair value adjustments but I think that's it. That's the paragraph three is PUPs, and paragraph four we already know is impairment. So we've got 10, 20, 29 is the fair value of net assets. Of the 44 value is 15 goodwill, and paragraph four says that the goodwill is not impaired. So that's working to finished. Paragraph one we've dealt with. Paragraph two. Well, we've effectively dealt with it. I've done the fair value adjustment and I've made a note up here of the uh, adjustments necessary. I'm going to put these in. I'm going to write these into my question paper. Up against property, plants and equipment, I'm writing plus four. It's on the question paper. Plus four and minus one. Intangibles, I'm going to write plus three and then minus point five. Uh, and I need to make these adjustments uh, in the retained earnings, don't I? Yeah, I will need to make these retained earnings adjustments. So plus 4 minus 1 and plus 3 minus 0.5. Plus 3 minus 0.5. Okay. Paragraph 3. On 30 September, Saracen's inventory includes goods bought from Paladin. It's a cost plus profit is selling price. It's a PUP calculation. It's a 30% profit margin. It's 30% on cost. Selling price is there for 130. The profit element is 30 hundredths. And 30 hundredths multiplied by 2.6. So that looks to me like it's uh, times 3 divided by 1.3 is 0.6 profit and that's in Paladin uh, so it's a PUP in Paladin again I'm just writing this in minus 0.6 against the inventory and minus 0.6 against the profits uh -huh. and then the last sentence on 
uh, paragraph 3. And the agreed current account balance owed by Saracen. So oh, I will write this in here. I'm going to reduce receivables by 1.3 and I'm going to reduce payables by 1.3. I need to do this up here. Reduce inventory by 0.6. Reduce retained earnings by 0.6. Okay, and I've done the 1.3 payables and receivables. The only other thing I've got there is the uh, 2.5 impairment in Augusta. I'm in the position, I think, where I can do working 3, which is the consolidated retained earnings. And it's Paladin, Saracen, Augusta. Per the question, now, I think I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Uh, Put the question for Paladin is 25, 7, and 9, 2, that's 34, 9. The Saracen, can I cheat? Uh, yeah, I will do. Hang it. Uh, 18, per the question. Augusta. Now here I definitely will cheat because I only bought Augusta halfway through the year and I know that the year's profits are 1200 so it's 600 for the half year post -ac. That's already arrived at the post acquisition for Augusta so I have no need to, to mess around deducting the pre-acquisitions. Then I've got the adjustments to make. I've got the fair value adjustments for Saracen. That's fair value of plant but then there's the depreciation. This is the situation today and there's the customer base. That's, um, what was it, 3 million? And the customer base amortization was 500. Um, and then that's, so we've got the PUP. The PUP was in Paladin and it was 600, wasn't it? Now there is another thing, and that's up here, and I should really have done it before I, before I forgot. You see this? This 5.4 has been brought down to 5. Well, as a year has now gone by, this discounting has now unrolled. So I need to unroll this at the rate of 8%. And 8% of five is uh, 400,000. That's the finance charge for this year. I knew a year ago, that's where I was, this is where I am now, this is where, and I knew here, I knew that I was going to have to pay 5.4. So I discounted it to get to the present value at the date the obligation was created, and now a year has now gone by, so I now have to unroll that discount. So it's a finance charge. The double entry, if you want it, the double entry is going to be debit finance charge with 400,000 and credit the obligation because now I had recorded it as five, now I've got the obligation increased to 5.4 and I've got to pay this tomorrow I have to pay this what does it say on the 1st of October that's tomorrow because I'm doing the balance sheet the consolidation at 30th September so this 400 is an expense to go in here um, so the unrolled discount and I think that that's it for adjustments to make so this is still 600 and that's still for the half year. 18, 22, 21, 24, 23, 500. And this one is 34, 9 minus 133, 9. Mm -hmm. If I now take off the PREAC, now the easy, simple way of taking the PREAC or finding the PREAC is here. Uh, there it is. That's the pre-acquisition, 12,000 retained earnings, plus the pre-acquisition fair value adjustments, the fair value adjustments as that acquisition. So pre-acquisition is 12 and 4 and 3, that's 19. And that 19 comes off there. Now this 600 is only post-acquisition. If you remember, I just, I've taken the wrong figure. I've taken the six months. And look at that. Oh, it's eight months post, not six months post. I've taken the wrong figure. <sighs> Michael is stupid. That's 800. And it's eight months. That was so close. And yet, you see, I had written it down. I had written it down. I'd written down up here, and this is why I do it. I'd written down eight months. 
just so that I'm telling you the marker I know. And if you think about it, I'd also written it down here, hadn't I? I'd also written six months there to show the mark I'm actually making a mistake. That's not why I wrote it. That's not why I made the mistake. But um, I could have got away with that. I could have uh, escaped any penalty there. 4,500, 800. And therefore, post and our share well, our share of the subsidiary was 80% our share of the associate was 25% 80% of 4,005 is 3,006 and 25% of 800 is 200 so that's 37,007 less impairment and there's no impairment in the subsidiary if there had been if they the subsidiary had been impaired it would just be the parent company share of the impairment of the subsidiary there is none it says in note 4 there's no impairment on the consolidated goodwill um, but if it had been it would just have been the parents share of the impairment of the subsidiary goodwill but there is an impairment in A and that's 2.5 million so I've got consolidated earnings of 35.2 I also need working for A, which is the NCI, and they are 20%. This is the NCI on the balance sheet, statement of financial position. Working for B would be my NCI on the, uh, their share of the statement of income, their share of this year's profits. Um, so that's 20%. Value at date of acquisition is up here in working to, um, it's the 7 plus their share of post ac retained and their share well the post ac retained is here and there it says post ac 4005 their share is 20% so 20% of 45 is 900 uh, 79 and then less their share of any goodwill impairment in the subsidiary but of course there is none in this example so 7009 and I also need working 5a which is the investment in the associate now this is interesting this is interesting the cost of that investment in the associate we're told was 10 million and we're entitled to our share of post ac and our share of post ac we already know that figure is um, our share of post ac is there 200 so 10,002 uh, less um, the impairment which is 2005 it is 2005 isn't it yeah, 2005 gives me 7,700. That's the investment in the associate. And I was just looking at this while I was having my coffee drink, which reminds me I'm just going to have another little drink of coffee now. Hang on. I'm trying to work out what the position was. This is for for your information, for interest, for your interest then. Um, net assets at date of acquisition of the subsidiary, this is not part of the answer, net assets at date of acquisition were shares 10, retained earnings brought forward were 31.8, retained earnings for four months was one third of that 1200 which is 400 so 42,200 42,200,000 with the net assets at date of acquisition and we bought our share we bought our share was 25 percent 25 percent is that 1055 10,550 and it cost us 10 so we've actually got a bargain purchase of 55 there. Um, 
we don't need to think about this, fortunately, because all I'm interested in for the uh, investment in the associate is the um, position at the year end. And the position at the year end tells me that uh, I've got this figure of um, 10 million cost plus 200,000, uh, and I'm impairing that. Uh, and I'm impairing it by 2,500. But it's interesting. I mean, I was just, just sitting there as I was doing the, as I was drinking my coffee, I was thinking to myself, this looks like it's a bargain purchase. But anyway, by the by, it's no big deal. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to rub that out because we don't need it. What we do need is um, a balance sheet because that's what the question says. So a statement of financial position, uh, goodwill. That's in working two, and the goodwill figure was 15. Um, we've got investment in associate, and that's in working 5A, and that's 7.7, it's just here, see. We've got intangibles, and intangibles were 7.5 of our own, plus the 3,000, minus 0.5, so that's 10, I think, isn't it? Um, and then we got PP, uh, tangible non current, so that's our own 40 plus the 31 of the subsidiary plus the four fair value adjustment minus the one depreciation on the fair value adjustment. So that's 74, I think. Um, I'm happy that it's 74. I hope you're happy that it's 74. Let's see what we're adding up to. And it's 70, 80, 90, 90, and 106.7. Then we've got the current assets, inventory. There's a, an adjustment isn't on the inventory. Inventory is 11.2 plus 8.4 minus that PUP. That's 19. Receivables is um, 7.4 plus 5.3 minus minus 1.3 cancellation. So that's for 11.4. Bank is 3.4 plus nothing, so it's just 3.4. Uh, 110, 20, 130, 139, 140,500. And shares? Normally, it, well, not normally, it's often the case that there's a share for share exchange, and, and where there is, it's often the case that the uh, share element has not been recorded. Uh, in this case, it has. So uh, there's no share for share exchange. I'm sorry. In this case, there is no share for share exchange. So there's nothing to worry about there. So I've just got equity shares of 50. I've got retained earnings, and that's in working three. Working three tells me retained earnings is 35,200. Uh, NCI is in working for A. It always is working NCI on the balance sheet. In my workings, it's always working for A. Seven thousand nine hundred per that. Um, don't think we've got no, no revaluation accounts or anything. So eighteen ninety three point one. It's bound to be yes, there is deferred tax as a non-current liability. Deferred tax is fifteen plus eight twenty three. 116.1. Then we've got current liabilities. Before I forget, we've got the obligation, the deferred consideration. And that's 5.4, isn't it? Because it's payable tomorrow. Uh, we've got bank, uh, nothing and 2.5. We've got current liabilities of 11, 6, and 6.2 minus the 1.3. I've written it into my. Uh, Question paper. So minus the 1.3, 11, 17, no, 10.3, 16.5, 16.5. Let's see how we're doing. 16, 21, 31, 37, 39, 40, 140. 140.5. How are we doing? Yeah, that's perfect. And that's question one from December 11. Um, and to be brutal, you know, there's, there wasn't that much 
that was unusual. I don't can't remember the last time I saw four eight split. Um, but I should be used to it. Having said that, of course, I did make the mistake, or nearly made the mistake. Um, there was the deferred payment. Well, you should be getting used to to discounting, multiplying by one, divided by one plus the interest rate. Um, fair value adjustments will be they they will be and how how much can i emphasize it fair value adjustments will be in an f7 question one they will be there the same as pups and pups and fair value adjustments will be in question one in an F7 question one, so just get used to it and be, be comfortable. They're worth marks, they're worth two marks each of these. PUPs are two marks, fair value adjustments, two marks. They were f that's four marks. <laughs> you can't, trust me here, you can't afford to throw those four marks away. Those, they are routine, standard, every day, every, every six months. Four marks in a, a question one of an F7 exam. This you have to get used to. It's the, the basic equation for cost plus profit is selling price. Calculating the PUP, the profit element is thirty hundred and thirty, because it's a markup. It's a percentage based on cost. If it had been thirty percent gross profit, then the hundred would be there. The cost would be seventy, uh, and so that will be the profit relationship. As it is, it's thirty hundred and thirty. So you just have to be very careful that you read it extremely carefully don't make silly mistakes uh, and you'll put the marks up I don't want to spot 130 do I uh, receivables and payables I'll put these in there in my answers just to show that I know because if I'm running out of time I want the market to know that I know that I need to cancel out the receivables against the payables. There's no cash in transit, there's no goods in transit, so there's no adjustments other than the cancellation of 1.3 against the receivables and the payables. That cheated a little bit there. It's not a big cheat, it's just uh, I'm interested in knowing what the associates post acquisition profits are. I could have gone the long way around. I could have said it's 33. I could have done this, couldn't I? 33 per the question question gives me 33 down here and then take off the pre-acquisition well, the 33 31.8 plus 432.2 32.2 taken away as pre-acquisition would then give me the 800 post acquisition okay so I, I shortcut it um, I feel confident in shortcutting it if you don't if you want to do it the long way around then fine do it the long way around but um, I felt comfortable enough. The impairment, fair enough. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. That that should, ladies and gentlemen, that should have been a straightforward question. We should have been picking up 20, 21, 2, 3 marks out of 25 in that question. Even in the intense pressure of an exam situation, there is no reason for scoring fewer than, as a minimum, 20 marks times 1432 so even with all that chat it's still only taking 27 minutes 27 minutes out of 45 is 60% um, of the time I've done it in 60% even with all that chat this is not a time pressure question